So I think awesome. you're good. Can you do it? Yeah, I'm doing. All right. That's good. So thank you, coach. Um, yeah, set. Yes, I will uh, introduce you in German and then we can switch over to to English and um, <laughs> That's awesome. listen to your talk, coach. Sounds good. So, guten Abend, liebe Coaches. Um, für den heutigen Vortrag wird Coach Wells zu uns sprechen über das Thema Developing the Center Position. Da bin ich wirklich sehr gespannt drauf. Das ist ein Thema, was so im Football Coaching nicht so sehr in den Fokus gestellt wird und dementsprechend ist es etwas, von dem wir definitiv viel lernen können. Coach Wells ähm, hat, fast, hat über 20 Jahre an unterschiedlichen Colleges und Universitäten gecoacht und bringt eine unglaubliche Erfahrung im Offensive Line Coaching mit und ich bin wirklich gespannt auf den heutigen Vortrag. So Coach Wells, it's up to you. I'm excited to listen to that, uh, to that topic and um, I think that's a topic that's not very common, but I think we, we all can get a lot of out this. So it's up to you, coach. Awesome. Jürgen, thank you. Um, yeah, when, when, uh, when we were talking about what, what topic to present, um, you know, I, I, I speak on a lot of offensive line stuff because I think that's what I'm probably best at. And uh, I had never had anyone ask me to just talk about the center position. And, um, and when I started asking around, I asked a lot of my friends that are offensive line coaches if they, you know, what are you doing specifically for the center? Is there anything else? Have you ever talked about that? And really, it, it seems like a very, very specific topic that, that we haven't done a lot of work on. So this was a lot of fun for me. It allowed me to dive into the, to take a deep dive into the position um, and really look at some of the things that I believe about the position. I played the position. Um, and, uh, and so I hope this helps. I think it'll, it'll talk about some things very specific obviously to a very specific position. So uh, we can kind of get things started. Uh, I've got my contact information there. Um, and certainly if, uh, if anyone wants to, uh, to, to contact me to ask any more questions or you want to talk about anything else, um, I'm an open book. I'd, I'd be happy to do it. I love doing this stuff and, uh, and, and really, really uh, honored to, to talk to the German coaches today. So uh, let's, uh, let's get started. So let's see if I can get my There we go. Okay, so that's me um, with no beard. I've got my, my coronavirus beard here, but um, like Jürgen probably said, you know, I, I was a college coach for, for 28 years or 27 years. And, uh, and then just by kind of a, a weird uh, happenstance, I ended up uh, taking this job at the Kingswood Oxford School, which is a, a private high school in Connecticut. Um, I did it primarily for my kid, for my son. I uh, gave him an awesome opportunity to really attend a, an outstanding uh, high school. Um, and uh, they have outstanding athletics. So it was, it was a great move for me that the coach had kind of moved on and uh, they reached out to me. And uh, I'm from Connecticut. Uh, I played at Trinity College, which is right about 10 minutes away from here. And uh, uh, coached at Brown University, coached back at Trinity. You can see all the places, Bates, Chicago. Uh, Illinois Wesleyan. And then I became a head coach. Uh, I was the head coach at Endicott College for 13 years. I was the head coach at Bowdoin College for four years. Um, but every place I've been, um, if I haven't coached the offensive line, it's because the head coach coached the offensive line. So I've been a line coach my whole career. And, uh, and like I said, I did play the position. So, um, so I think center has a lot of specific issues. Um, number one, no one wants to play center. No one. Um, your center does not want to play center. I'm just telling you that right now. Um, they're not born, they're conscripted, which is just a fancy word for forced into playing it. Um, and that was my story. I, I went to college and I really thought that I was a, a you know, a defensive player. And the, uh, the head coach kind of steered me toward the offensive side of the ball. Um, they taught me how to snap. And then that week I was thrown, having never played the position before, I was thrown into a team period. Um, you know, as a freshman against a junior all-conference nose guard. And uh, so I kind of had to learn how to, how to do it on my own. Um, uh, my line coach was not, not a, a line guy 100%, so I kind of had to learn how to play it on my own. And uh, so I think this presentation probably reflects that. Um, other problems, centers are always on the ball. So the only way the center, and I'll talk about this later, can create space is to move the ball away from him. Um, but the nose guard can always crowd the football. Uh, the defense can always crowd the football. So centers are always on the ball. They can't use levels or splits to create an advantage for them like the rest of the line. So that's the number, that's a number one problem. Um, number two, you never have enough of them. 
So your starting center, if you really, really like him, I guarantee you your backup is a backup for a reason. There's not typically a lot of competition at the center position because it's a tough position to play and you want to play your best five. Um, the only thing I can tell you is teach all your linemen to snap. Every single last one of them, teach them to snap and then see who does it the best. And then you want to specifically train those guys so you have more than one. Um, there's always a horror story about what would happen if number if the number two if the number two center went down, and uh, my this year was what if my number one went down? Um, my backup was undertrained and, and unwilling to do it. So, but the biggest center issue is this. So that is a lonely feeling when that happens. Um, if anyone's ever played center, that's happened to all of us at one point or another. If you've taken enough snaps, um, that's a lonely place. Number one thing is to snap the football. So make sure they do that. But uh, things that I look for when we're starting to look for centers, and, and I, I hope this is maybe why my coach uh, thought that I would make a good center. Um, you want guys that are kind of short area explosive. So uh, what I mean by that is like, you know, they're a guy that with like a quick punch could like punch a hole in a, in a drywall wall. You know what I mean? Like sudden, twitchy, explosive. So they, they're, it's always the place they put the short guy. It's always the place that they put the guy that can't do anything. But you, you want to have a guy that's, that, that's kind of twitchy and explosive. He's got to be a tough son of a gun, tough son of a bitch, uh, you know, because he's going to have somebody on his nose. And the, the really good ones can, can, control, can control a nose guard. Um, but they got to be tough. They have to be trainable because everything you're going to teach them is offensive line times 10 because the offensive line is so specific and it has so many techniques. The center has to know all that. Plus he has to know things that are specific for his position and he has to be able to snap the ball and he's got to be reliable because he's going to start every play. Um, he might be a, a call guy for you, but he's going to, he's going to be, you got to be a reliable guy. Um, so here's, here's kind of my, my table of contents today for developing the center. We're going to talk about stance. We'll talk about the grip on the ball. We'll talk about specifically snapping the football. Um, I'll give you a teaching progression that uh, is kind of the way that I teach new centers. Um, we'll talk about some things in run blocking, um, creating some movement without momentum, which I think centers have to do, reaching a one technique, blocking back on plays where you're trying to free the guard for a pull, um, and I'm going to show you a neat technique that not a lot of people use. So um, it's a little like secret sauce, uh, the rip technique. And then we'll talk in pass pro about setting on a shade when you're on the man side of the protection and then setting in, in the middle when you're on the zone side of the protection. Um, I think that are very specific to the center position. So let's talk about stance. So here's 1918, right? Uh, game hasn't been around that long, but uh, here was the center stance back in 1918. Obviously, uh, a lot different than modern football. Uh, very extended, butt in the air, uh, coming off the ball because that was the nature of the game with the, with the single wing, and, and, uh, and that's how they played, 1918. Well, here's, here's uh, 1934. So the game hasn't moved that much further. You can see he's a little bit further back on his haunches, probably going to move a little bit more right and left. Um, that is actually uh, former U.S. President Gerald Ford, uh, who played at, Mich at Michigan. Um, but you can see a two-handed stance. But what goes around comes around. This is Ferris State, uh, which is a Division II school in Michigan, really good school. They teach a two-handed shotgun snap. So, you know, whatever comes around goes around. Do what works for you. Do what works for your center. But there's lots of different ways to skin a cat. So just in terms of stance, the way that I look at the stance is this. I want the feet to be parallel. And I want them to think of their legs as two kickstands. So anyone that follows LaCharles Bentley, and I know LaCharles has been over to Germany, but he really talks about the back leg of a stance being like a kickstand on a motorcycle or on a, on a bicycle, right? That there are three 45-degree turns in that leg at the ankle, at the knee, and at the hip. Well, the center has two kickstands because we want his feet to be parallel, okay? So he's going to have two kickstands. So we want the feet to be outside the ankles, the ankles to be outside the knees, we want to try to pinch the knees a little bit. We want to initiate our stance as a center by hinging, not squatting. <clears throat> so if you Google center, football centers, 
you see a lot of guys that are kind of down in that squatty position and they're pointing out things to the play and, you know, the ball's really vertical. That's prior to the snap, all right? But when they get into their stance, I think they hinge at the back. So basically it's like leaving your hips in that good position and then hinging forward at the hip um, and bringing your hand down to the ball, not bringing your butt to the ground. So you're pushing your butt back so your butt remains slightly higher than the knees. I think this is a real good picture of Mississippi State's guy. Um, the knees are inside the ankles, and he has a stable, neutral spine. So it's not flat, right, but it's at that angle. Um, and, and the center is in a three-point, but it's really more like a two-point stance because of the, the, the ball being uh, lifted up off the ground. He doesn't have to get his hand on the ground. Um, offhand for me is always poised and ready to strike. That's consistent with all the guys on their offhand. And that would be a good center stance to me. Um, you know, a three-point center, if you want to call it that. Okay. Now, with the grip, here's, here's an interesting picture. So I found this picture of quarterback center exchange under center, right, at Alabama. And if, each, if you look at the hands of each of the centers on where they have the laces, they're all a little bit different. So you've got the, the, the center all the way to the, uh, to the side here. He's using the laces almost like he's throwing the football. You got the center in the middle. He's probably got his thumb on the laces with the ball out of, out of like a half quarter turn. And then you've got a guy that's somewhere in the middle. His hands really aren't using the laces, um, but it's in a different spot. Uh, so there's, there's a million ways to do that, to, to, to grip the football. In large part, when we talk about it, an under center snap is based on where the quarterback wants the laces. And I'll explain how we get him to do that. Um, but then, you know, there's also people that are teaching the dead snap now. Um, and, you know, snapping it with, you know, uh, the hand is on top of the ball, uh, and I'll show that too, but it's a totally different grip. So there's lots of different ways to grip the football. I have, I have friends of mine that, are, that swear by, you know, putting their thumb over the laces, and that is the ideal way to snap, whether you're under center or in the shotgun. I don't think there's any right or wrong way to do it. Um, I just think that you want to have a way that your hand is, is comfortably on top of the football and that you're able to make the snap. Uh, so that you can grip the football. So if your hands are a little bit smaller and you need the laces, then use the laces. If you, if you don't need the laces, then you don't need the laces. Um, I, I don't particularly use the dead snap, but I've seen it used effectively. Um, we want to get under center sometimes, so it's a little bit different, but uh, that gives you an idea of some of the grips. Now, when you get into snapping the football, right, the number one job of the, of the center is to snap the football. Here's kind of how we start, right? Um, we start the center directly over the ball. So I'm talking about no extension, ball is kind of directly down below, below his chin, and, and we want to kind of start teaching the snap from there, um, especially the shotgun snap, um, because this allows our, our center to kind of look between his legs before he snaps. Um, and as he gets better, we'll extend the ball away, right, um, to make a wider neutral zone. Um, when we start, we start on a line. So you want to get on a vertical line and have the center straddle the line. And then that allows him to have a, have a uh, kind of a, a visual guide of where, where he would want the ball and where we want the ball to release. Um, we'll start when we're snapping under center, the ball goes on the right ear of a right-handed right -handed center. The ball goes to the right ear, so it would be off the line. All right, if we were in a shotgun snap, the ball is on the center's nose, so it would be on the line. So that's the differences between snapping the shotgun snap and snapping the under center snap is a little bit different. All right. Um, we want to begin any snapping that we do. So a raw rookie center, um, you know, early, early preseason, those sorts of things. We want to snap with no footwork. Um, it, we want to make sure that we're finding each center's release point and developing confidence and hitting the target. So if we're teaching a guy to, so again, I'm talking about a shotgun snap right now, but if we're teaching him, we would kind of work with him so that the center could then look between his legs, identify the point, bring his head up, and snap the football on the, on the quarterback's cadence, right? Um, it also allows us to kind of see where the ball is being snapped and where his particular release point is. Um, and he's got to figure out where that is. You know, if he's releasing it too low, it's going to dribble back. If he's releasing it too late, it's going to go high. If he's flipping his wrist, it's going to go to the right. So we can kind of solve some of those problems before we start moving their feet. Um, and then we add in movement as the center gets confident. So we have a specific way to teach it that I've used, but then ultimately we're going to use our plays and footwork uh, as the centers and quarterbacks are doing their exchange work. Uh, we're going to get the center working on those particular things um, individually. 
So here's with the under, under center snap. Um, we kind of work backwards on this. So as we teach it, um, and this is how I was taught, we get the center in his position. We have him grip the football. <coughs> Excuse me. And we would have him bring the ball up to the quarterback. The quarterback would seat his hand under the center's butt there, the top hand, so the center knows where it is with some steady pressure. Um, we put the ball there, and then we tell the center to bring the ball back to the ground. And the quarterback would get it so that the laces would be just where he wants it. Like, that's the advantage of being under center, right? That he can get the laces exactly where he wants it. He doesn't have to spin the ball. Then the center would grab it from there and bring it back, and he can see, okay, this is how that quarterback wants that ball grip. I had to know three different grips for three different quarterbacks. So, you know, I gripped the ball. And then um, what we want to do is get the ball in line with our right ear. We want to we kind of get the ha hand on the ball, and we want to have a stiff wrist. We don't want our wrist to be, to be uh, loose. We want, it to, we want to stiffen our wrist, and we want to feel that pressure from the quarterback's top hand, right? We don't want him lifting us up off the ground, but there's got to be some steady pressure so we know where the ball is going to go. And then we snap and let it go. It's, that, it's really that simple. But the under center snap is more of a, of a pulling action. It is not a pendulum swing. So these are the differences between the snaps. It's a, pe it's, a, it's a pulling action. So as the ball comes up off the ground, he's pulling the ball back to almost where the elbow hits the inside of the thigh. And then as, he, as the hand continues back, it will naturally rotate about a quarter turn and it should hit the, set, hit the quarterback in the sweet spot. Most of the fumbled snaps that we see under center are reach blocks to the left. Um, and that's just because he's really going to thump that thigh a little bit earlier. So you got to work that one twice as much. Um, that's just an observation over the years of kind of working under center. Now that things have really kind of gone to the, uh, to the shotgun, um, you know, it's a little bit different. So number one thing is we want the ball on the nose and right down the middle because every snap is going to start with a, with, a, with a snap right down the middle, all right? Uh, we're going to grip the ball. Now, grip it the way you want it. Um, when I shotgun snapped, I would grip it like I was throwing the football. That's just how I gripped it because uh, it didn't matter how it was going back. Um, again, I have a friend that's, that swears by thumb over, the, thumb over the, the, the laces and grip the ball that way and you never have a problem. Um, I have another friend that says you turn the you turn the uh, the ball a certain way, you know, to get it to spin back a certain way. Grip it the way that you would throw a football. So just pick it up. If you don't need laces to throw a football, don't use you don't need the laces. But grip the ball in that way. You're going to slightly flex the wrist and lock it into place. So the stiff wrist minimizes that opportunity to go sailing over the quarterback's head. The arm is a pendulum swing, so it's different than an under center snap. It is going to swing back. Um, and it's going to be a perpendicular swing to the line of scrimmage, no matter where your first step goes. You want to keep that very consistent right down the middle. Um, when the forearm contacts the thigh on the snap, open your grip and let it go. I, I try not to tell the guys to snap or flick the wrist because I think what they'll do is they'll turn their wrist and that'll send the snap to the right. I think when you see those problems, it's because they're flipping their wrists. Um, the wrist is naturally going to turn a bit, but just I just tell them, keep your wrist stiff. You know, know where, your, know where your release point is and let it go. Um, I tell them to follow through just like a quarterback would follow through. Um, and so I tell them, hey, thumb to bum, right? They, they, they snap the ball. They snap the ball. It goes back, and they just kind of – they're finishing their follow through. And we tell them, if you're going to miss, you got to miss high. There's nothing worse than a, a slow roller back to the quarterback. Um, at least if it comes up high – his eyes can kind of grab it and kind of remain downfield. If he's got to do this and run around and, and lower his eyes and lower his hands to get the football, uh, nothing ever good comes of that one. Um, we, did, we did have a quarterback pick one up this year and throw a touchdown pass on a slow roller, but um, it typically doesn't happen very often. So those are the tips on, on the shotgun snap. So if we look at it here, this is, uh, this is Oregon's center. I just, I just grabbed some film here. Uh, to kind of look at this, and I'll try to play it slow. But um, you can see that snap is going right back down the middle, even though he is going to his left. Um, and, it's a, and it is a, just a pendulum swing, and he's finding his, his release point so that he can get the ball back. Um, so I think that's a pretty good picture of kind of what you would be looking for. And, I, and I, again, I think going to the left is pretty difficult. So that's, good, that's a good picture. On the dead ball snap, so this is a great picture of the dead ball snap, uh, Washington State Center here, right? The pinky and the thumb 
are parallel from each other on the grip. So they're going to be on the outside and kind of, I would always say, kind of like you want the, the laces down between the, 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 the middle finger and, and your uh, index finger. Um, but they're going to, the pinky and the thumb kind of form, you know, they're parallel. We're going we're gonna to spread our fingers and get the fingers on the ball, and we're going to stiffen our wrist. The outside fingers guide, the inside fingers push. All right, we don't want to flick the wrist. We just want to pendulum swing it back. You're going to notice there's a little slight bend in the arm, but not too much. And we want to extend the ball as far away from the, bar as po ball, the body as possible. And it's a quick pendulum action with the snap. So it is still that pendulum movement. It's just going to come back a little bit different. What we don't want to do is we don't want to flick the wrist. We're not trying to basketball toss it. We're just trying to stiffly keep the wrist stiff and bring it back and do the work with our arm. Um, if the ball is flipping back end over end, you're too high on the football, move down on the football a little bit because your hand is still kind of on the top, not the point. And if, uh, if it's going into everything, you're probably flicking or scooping the ball um, or you're not snapping it fast enough. So just speed up the, the action. It's a quick snap. So again, here's, let's see if I can get to this. All right, so here's, so here he is snapping it here. And you can, this is on a pass set. But you can see on his arm, it's just a, it's just a pendulum action back, right? It's just, it's just going straight back to that quarterback, right down the middle. And he's keeping his arm fairly, you know, it's fairly, it's got a little bend in there, but he's not flicking his wrist. He's keeping it, he's keeping it stiff. Then he can get out there. You can see, you know, kind of the placement of the football. He's right there. So a pretty good example of, of that. Um, I do teach the short yardage. You know, at some point our center's got to get down and be a root hog. Um, so this is kind of more, you know, what you might, might see out of the service academies or triple option teams. Um, weight's going to be more forward, and, and we tell them to don't put any weight, extra weight on the ball. Put all the weight on your non-snapping hand. Um, his butt's going to be slightly higher, and the, and the quarterback's got to kind of stay with the, the center a little bit more on this because there's going to be more of a surge. Um, so we do want to get a couple of these snaps in every day. Um, we just kind of have it as part that they're going to get five snaps going straight forward uh, with a four-point stance, uh, root hog, that's uh, what we call it. Uh, so when we do get into our, our, you know, if we had the quarterback sneak or if we had to get down on the goal line, um, we're just firing off. But we want to be able to do that with no problem. Um, so here's, this is actually, this is actually Navy, I think. Um, and I just clipped it out. Hopefully you guys can see this a little bit, but he's just snapping and kind of going play side and getting down low. Um, but again, we use him in those situations. And if you're going to use it, you better practice it. All right. So the progression. All right. So if I had a brand new center, this is kind of how I would want to start with him. Uh, we'd straddle the vertical line. And then with no footwork, we'd start with the under center portion of it just so that they get, a, they get an idea of how to do it. So we place that ball into the quarterback's hand. We get him up underneath there. We have the center just hand the ball back to him through his legs. The quarterback adjusts it to where he wants it. And then we bring it back. And that's how we kind of start. And we'll start snapping with no footwork from there, just having him pull the ball back on the cadence so that he can hit that. The quarterback would just kind of keep his hand there. And we might do, we might do like 10 – just into the quarterback's hand, his upper hand with, the, with, the, uh, with his other hand kind of out of the way. Just getting to a point where we can hear that good thump of thumping back into the quarterback's palm. With shotgun, like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of keep the ball underneath us a little bit, and we'll look at the quarterback, bring our eyes up, and then the quarterback will call for the snap. And so we want to look where it's going, bring our eyes up, and then send the ball back when he calls for it. And that is just to kind of figure out our release point so that the, the quarterback can catch the ball and the, quarter, the, the center can turn around and look at him and say, oh, that was high or that was low or the coach is working with him. That's a little low. You're working to figure out so that they can figure out their release point. Um, and then as they develop confidence in the snap, we'll start moving them. So the first way we start moving them is we just want them to set straight back. So this would be like a quick pass set, like I call it a quick one-two. They're just going to snap and get back two sets and kind of settle their feet. So we would want to go five reps going right, then left, and then five steps going left and right. And these are just six-inch little kind of popping back off the line of scrimmage, learning how to send the ball back, 
while you're going backwards. So I think that's where that's just kind of where we start of the guys just kind of moving backwards that way. Then we start working lateral steps. So we're going to do 10 to the right and 10 to the left. So this is just to kind of get them just to step with one foot, just to step with one foot. And so they're snapping and keeping that ball down the middle, keeping the ball down the middle. Or if they're under center, you know, hitting that guy in the same spot, um, even though he's stepping with his right and stepping with his left. Um, a right-handed center stepping right should fan the air. So if he's stepping to his right, he's actually moving the leg that he would normally contact. So he's going to feel like he's fanning the air. If he's going left, the forearm's going to thump the thigh more. Um, so he's going to feel those things in the, uh, in the snap. Then we work to outside zone. And so, you know, or a reach block. And we want to go 10 to the right and 10 to the left. And what I put in the center's head is I want our centers to be able to one-on-one -on -one reach a one technique. And I tell them, like, if you can one-on-one -on -one reach the one technique, we're cooking with gas. We can do just about anything because I think that's a difficult block. Um, but it's not as hard as you think. Uh, and so we, we really teach the guys that we really want them to be great one-on-one -on -one reach blockers when they get a shade, um, especially when they get a shade. Really, it's when they get the shade on their, on their front side arm. It's not as bad as you think. Um, but those would be the progressions, right, that they're going to work from a quick pass set to a lateral step to the outside zone. We just let them snap and go, right? And they take three or four steps and they just zone off one way or the other. Um, if, if we did nothing else, that would be a center, a center should take that progression um, every single day. He should do at least that, that, that amount of snaps. So you're getting 10, uh, then you add it in, that's 30, and then you're adding up, uh, that's about 40 snaps total um, that they should get without you having to do anything with them. Um, I think that's their responsibility. Then we'll work into specific footwork used in the offense. So if you're someone that likes to pull your center, you have to work that. Uh, we're going to block back in some way, shape, or form. We have to work that. Um, you know, if you're going to be pass setting him differently, you have to work that. So uh, specific things used in the offense, we'll get into that as we, we get uh, deeper into it with the quarterbacks. That's all that. All right. Now, extension of the football. So – as centers get better, they want to be able to extend the ball away from them as far as they can without it becoming, without it impeding the snap. So the further away that you can extend it, the further away that you can keep the defense because they can't cross the ball. So that creates space for the center. So this would be like, all right, I extended the ball away. He can't get closer to the ball, so I'm, I'm okay here. But it also creates a bigger neutral zone for, for your own players. Because remember, if we move off the ball and they can't cross the ball, then I can create more space. And offensive line is all about creating or reducing space and time. So we can use this to our advantage. So here's another one. You can see Wisconsin center has it really extended, right? And he'll actually pre-turn the ball on their snaps if you, if you analyze him. Um, he does that. But again, here's the same thing. He's extended the ball, so he extends the defense away from him but he's also keeping it away from, from his, uh, his teammates that much, that much more. And again, uh, Texas using the dead snap. Um, again, keeping the, for the further away it is, the further away, the, the better the neutral zone, uh, the more space that we have to work with. Um, this, is, this is something I think is really, it's an interesting topic, um, uh, creating movement without momentum. So if I'm a center and I'm always on the football, then I have to find a way to be able to move a nose guard, but he might be right on top of me, and I'm going to get no – I might get no steps into this. Um, you know, my guard might be to off the ball, you know, hands – his fingertips are on the center's heels, and he can get a three- or four-step run-up to hit a defensive lineman. Uh, the, the center never gets that luxury. So, um, so this is a concept, movement without momentum. If you guys want to – I know John Strollo did some great stuff on this, but if you watch what happens, this is what happens more often than not. Everybody does board drill. And if you video your board drill, right, I want you to watch the amount of times that the defensive lineman, because it's a, it's, it's a, it's a not, it's not a real drill, right? Everybody goes what I, what I say, everybody goes caveman. They just, they just go back to just running into each other. But watch what happens here. So I'm going to rewind this. This is just a tight end at Texas A&M. I, I thought this was a pretty good picture because when you get to this point, all right, 
both players, the, the offensive player did not take a step. Right? Defensive player really didn't take a step either. But watch, watch the kid in the white extend. The defensive player has his hands inside. Right there, we would, I think, all say as a coaching body, 41 is beat. All right? But as you let the film play, he ends up getting his hand back in. He starts moving his feet. It's a pretty good block. I'll let, you, I'll let you watch it from the get. Resets his hands, but then he gets his feet restarted, and he creates movement with no momentum. They're locked up, and he's got to move the guy pushing against him. He creates movement without momentum. So, <clears throat> so I clipped these out. This is from a couple of years ago, and we were just doing what we call our Main Street drill. It was a three-level blocking drill. And so here's one of my centers with no ball, but he's a center going against uh, a defensive, uh, a light, lighter, lighter kid, defensive end, but explosive kid. And I want you to watch this because I think this is really key to center play is when the ball is snapped. So I'm going to get here. Okay, my center gets one step in the ground. The defensive lineman is rocking into him, has now won the block by terms of, you know, what you would think. But because the center stays with it, now he can get restarted. And he ends up being able to win the block. Again, I'll play it from here. He gets knocked back, but he gets restarted. This is movement without momentum. So it's the key, the key parts of center play is getting your hands set or reset and staying in contact with the guy, keeping your feet, keeping your feet alive, even though they get shocked. All right, here's here's our here's our second center. These guys split time, so they were both pretty good. So here's our second center going against a pretty big kid. About a, this kid probably 290, defensive tackle. Center's probably about 245, 250, all right? He's got good inside hand position, but, you know, he's able to kind of create some momentum. That's a, that's a pretty damn good block, right? I think we'd all agree on that. All right, so he's a better example of kind of getting your feet up and keeping going. Well, let's get to the third kid. All right, this guy, this guy hadn't played a lot of football, um, but, again, playing against a, uh, about a 240-pound defensive end, about a 290-pound tackle. You can see he's all up and down. He's beating the block. You know, he's beat. But because he keeps his feet moving, he can continue to – he can win the block. So this is creating – his feet went backwards. His feet went backwards, yet he got – yet he won when he went forward. So centers are all about being able to snap and get their hands into the right position and keeping their feet wide. This is my point. So centers have to create movement without momentum. So when guys aren't firing out – and getting three steps onto the defensive lineman, if they can, that's great. But more often than not, it's going to be like this drill that we all do. Every position has to figure out how to do this. Centers have to know how to do this because they're always on the ball. All right, so specific blocks that I think are, are specific to centers that we work on. I want the guys to be able to reach a one technique. So I teach them to reach just like I teach any other position on the line to reach. The only thing that's different is that – I'll allow the center to get a little more depth uh, on his initial step just because he's got he's on the ball. So we start our reach blocking by teaching the arc step. So I'll teach this to all the guys, but, um, you know, it, it's kind of a starting point. So an arc step for us um, is not a bucket step. It's going to be a little more lateral, but it's also back a little bit. And all that we're doing here is we're un being able to unlock our hips uh, we're not going to totally change, totally move our shoulders to the sideline, but we're going to open up, and we're going to kind of. I, I used to tell them like, if you got, if there was something on the ground there, you'd want to step over it. And we're looking to kind of load up so that we can get, we can get a, 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 a half a man advantage on a head up defender, right? And so that to me, that right there, is an arc step. So we're going to start by teaching the centers to do this. So when we're doing the the quarterback center exchange. This is the step that I want them to do when I'm, when I'm saying, okay, we're going to reach right or we're going to reach left. Or we're going to outside zone right, we're going to outside zone left. That's the step. So we start there. Then we teach them with their off hand. So if, if a center was reaching to the left, it's going to be his snap hand. If a center is reaching to the right, it's going to be, it's going to be his off hand. So we, the term I use is that we're going to stab and grab. So we're going to arc, and then we're going to stab and grab. So as our second step hits the ground, we're going to stab the defender with our hand 
you know, kind of into the V of the shoulder pads. So we want to kind of get in there. And if we could get in there and grab it and hook it, we would. You know, if we grab down on there. And I think that's a great picture of Wendell blocking J.J. Watt, right? He's right in where, where they want him. He's in a good position there. His eyes are going to look for the outside bicep because that's an aiming point. But our hand is going to stab. So it's going to kind of, as we're stepping, it's going to kind of shoot out from our body and so that we can stab it in there and grab the, grab the, the defender. So when we teach it, we then take them out and we, we tell them to find their brace. So when I talk about a brace, I'm talking about this position that we're getting these guys in. So again, you can see our, my tight ends coach is kind of getting his, his guy in the right position. But here's my center, right? So he wants to be, he's, this is a pre-stabbed position, so he's locked up. He's got a long lever that's going from his back leg all the way to his, his back arm. Okay, and then we're going to just tell them, we're going to tell the defender, run. And we're going, to, we're going to tell these guys, run to reach. And what we want them to do is once he's stabbed in there, we want him to run to reach and lean into the defender to try to get around him. If he could get around him, there's finishing moves that we'll teach him. But for right now, we just want him to run to reach. So this is what the, that drill looks like. We're going to get them all set there. Then on the command, the defense is running, the offense is running, and we're trying to get them, get them onto our back hip. Okay. And then we put the whole thing together. So I give them the hand shields because I think that they can grab the top of the hand shield. So they're going to stab the hand shield and try to grab it. Um, and they're going to put the whole thing together. With this drill, though, I would always go a little wider because um, I want to challenge them because it's not real. Um, so I tell the bags move out a little bit and really challenge the guy to get out there to reach it. And it makes reaching that one shade not, not a big deal. So I'll let you watch this one. So you're going to see 72, who, who was trained as a center but played more guard for me. Um, and our tight end over here was doing this. But uh, if you watch 72, he was, he was a pretty good technical football player, a little robotic, um, but he was, he, was, he was easy to coach. So he's just going to take off. He's going to run. And then where do you hit that? It's on, it's on whatever step that you can get there. So it could be on three. It could be on five. Um, but we worked that drill with the guys. Uh, you know, centers would work this drill almost pretty much every day because they're constantly working on that ability to reach because it's so important uh, in, in the offense. So here's uh, – this, uh, this is actually Notre Dame, um, and, and I, like, I like this picture. I don't love his step, but I, but I like how he gets to the, the good final position here. So here's reaching a nose by a center in practice. So he snaps the ball. He doesn't have a great step, but the second step gets in the ground. He stabs into the – he stabs right in there. You can see that. Stabs in there, and then he works to extend his arm and lean into the defender, bringing him off the ball. So, again, I'll let you watch that full speed. Because you know, they'll always go short with that first step, but you really want to try to get him to get some width on that first step along with a little depth. And then also, here's Kelsey, you know, the, the, from, the, from, the, um, from the Eagles. He's probably the best center in football right now. Um, and, again, you can, you can watch how, how he kind of – He's going to gain width, so you can see his knee kind of get outside. So I know where his foot is, right, by where his knee went. But then here's second hand, second step. He's got his hand kind of stabbed in there. He's running for a point to reach him, and then he's, he's able to zone off to a linebacker. I mean, you really don't get better than this guy. He's so quick for 300 pounds and, and get out there and do it. But this is something that all your centers can do. And, and you just have to rep it enough, uh, they can get there. Um, that would be the reach block. The other one that's so specific to a lot of things that, that at least we do here is, and I think it's very common in football, is uh, your ability to block back and free the guard on a, on a power play or, or, or a sweep play where you want to get the backside guard pulling. Um, so we, we teach this as, we call it a choke. Um, and so we tell the center on this play, he makes a choke call, he's going to choke the nose guard. And that just means that <coughs> we're not really looking to get a lot of displacement. You know, if you've got a center that can kick the crap out of the nose guard and drive him 10 yards down the field, that's great. But what happens more often than not is that the nose guard is close enough to the pulling guard that he feels that go that way, and it brings him right into the center. So I tell the center it's more of like making really good solid contact and then being able to kind of hold point and knowing how to react to how the nose guard's going to play the play. So if we were blocking back on this, I would teach it the same way as a guard 
you know, blocking, blocking down or, or a tackle blocking down. We kind of use the same kind of terminology as our angle drive block. But uh, what I tell the centers is they want to drive their knee, their near knee toward the defender. All right. So if you drive your knee, the foot will follow. If you step, your knee may never get back over your toes. I hope that makes sense that we want to drive the knee at the defender, not our foot. The foot will come with. But if we tell him to step, he's going to end up with, with his leg in the wrong position. It's going to be extended. He's not going to have any power. So drive the knee toward the target, okay, the nose guard. The foot will follow. We want to hit this nose guard in the near V of his neck. So the knee, the neck into the shoulder pad, that's our aiming point. We're aiming for that jugular vein right there. All right, we want to aim between their shoulder and their ear. And then I'll tell the guys on this, they're probably going to use a split hand punch. So it's like one hand on one side and one hand upfield, but really they're just going to get, they're going to get their hands on the meat of the defender um, with their feet kind of keeping in between them. And then if they can get removal, okay, moving the guy, that's great. But really I want to tell the guys to drive like they're going to drive him, but understand how the nose guard's going to play the play. Uh, we use some different calls here. We'll use a, a wider call. I'll show you that uh, when we go against a three technique. Um, but in general, this is kind of, a pretty good picture here of it, of the center kind of snapping back. He gets positioned, and then we know the nose guard's going to work back toward where the pulling guard went. He can't help it. He sees it. He feels it. He wants to go that way. So I feel in general, he's going to try to come back either through the center or upfield. So I coach the guy, you've got to stop this guy. Your initial shot should stop him from charging up the field, but then you've got to be prepared for him to kind of come back over the top. All right, and so there's two ways you can do that. The way that the, the center for the Chiefs is doing it here, which is where he snaps, and then he's going to kind of slide and stay with him and just try to keep that position by sliding his feet and kind of shuffling up the field to stay between them. Um, uh, or, or we can use our rip technique, and we'll show you that. Now, where things get, that's easy, okay? And that, and that in terms of football technique, that's a lot easier to do against a one shade even a two eye. But when you get out to the three, this is where centers all get really, really nervous. And there's been a lot of, way, I've, I've coached this a couple of different ways um, to get the center to go back on a three technique. Now we'd be making a call here. Uh, we make a cat call, a center and tackle block where the tackle kind of gap seals down and kind of puts a hand on the three technique if you can. But if I got to get the center back there, we used to teach it the same way to kind of drive the knee toward the defender and extend our hands to make up the space and just try to hit it. But then the same problems were happening. The, 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 the guard pulls, the three technique can't help it. He goes with, they don't go up the field anymore. He kind of comes with the guard. He squeezes and it kind of brings him to the center. So what was happening was the center wasn't going back in the strongest position possible and he get blasted. I played the position. I don't want to get blasted. So we did some research and, and this was really something that, that we, that we found, you know, with some of the pro centers we're doing, they were starting to teach it. Um, and it's really easy. We tell them to shuffle back. So if we're going to choke a backside three, we're going to tell them to shuffle. So you got to watch it to kind of understand it, but he's just going to stay square and the center's going to snap the ball and just shuffle back. So he's going to stay square for that shuffle. And then he's going to adjust to where the, the nose guard goes. So if the nose guard kept flying up the field, he would just turn and try to knock him to the sideline. But most of the time, like I said, I think they go back over the top, and so he can turn it into kind of a running drive block. This was, this was something that I thought was, was, was really, really good. Um, again, there are a lot of things that you're like, well, is that going to really work? Um, and it does. And I have film on it of showing you guys doing it that aren't at the pro level. So that's a choke against the backside three is to shuffle back and then adjust to where he's going. So you can see at the end there, that's if the guy went up field, I finish him out and up the field. If he tries to go back across my face, I can stay with him and run him up the field. All right, so here it is, right? So we started teaching it, and this is probably, geez, this is probably about, about eight or 10 years ago now. Um, and here's my center. Okay, here's the backside three. So the, this guard's gonna be pulling here to, the, to, to lead the power. And so just watch him. He kind of just shuffles his feet back. Shoulders are a little turned, but that's okay. But you can see he's not just running back there. He's shuffling his feet. So this is when we first started kind of teaching it, right? And he's able to get himself into a position to be a brick wall. 
and then he starts to drive the guy up the field a little bit. Okay. Now, if we go back here, this is uh, probably about four years ago. All right. Here's the center working back to this three technique. Guard's going to pull. 53 is the center. He's going back. So watch. Watch him here. Let's see if I can get this right on the money for you. Here we go. So you can see, just shuffle square. Read, he's coming at me. Now I can hit him. And he finishes him back out to the outside. This kid was a really, really good football player. Um, but you can see the, 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 the square shuffle and then make a decision. Because if we're blocking back on a three technique, we know we got the tackle coming down to help us a little bit. All right? Now, this is, this is the secret sauce. This is, this is worth the price of admission right here. Okay? The choke to rip. Now, I, didn't, I, I saw this. I didn't believe it at first. Um, having played the position, I'm like, I wish I knew this. But this is what we will teach the guys. If the nose guard's working back over the top, which they do a lot of the time, if the nose guard works back across the top, so this is, a, this is especially good, too, if you're just blocking a shade, and he starts to go, we convert to a rip technique. So it's a little bit of a defensive technique to wall off or butt block or box out, you know, using different, different sports terminologies, but to get that defender to stay on our backside. And so this would be if you lock the guy up, he's just blocked back, and he's made contact with the nose guard. So everybody can see that. The rip looks like this. He's going to then take his backside arm and foot, and he's going to rip his arm and try to get his hip through and put that defender on his backside, on his backside hip. Now, in a perfect world, in a perfect world, we would, take a, we would hopefully be able to clamp the defender's arm down over our shoulder, clamp him with our off arm, and just rip our, our, our backside arm through. It sounds really complicated, but I'm telling you, if you get your centers to try this, and they have some time in practice just to try it, um, they'll find it's a, really, it's a really valuable technique. Will all of them be able to do it? I don't know. you got to coach them up. But it's not that bad. If he can just learn to take his backside arm and hip and foot and rip it through, he's going to keep himself between the, the, the nose guard and the, and the ball carrier. Really, it's, it's a lot easier than you think. Um, but the really good ones can clamp the arm down to their chest and, and – it's hilarious. I, I actually, I, I have a clip of it in here, and I'll, I'll pause it where the kid tries to actually pull the kid's arm off. Okay, so here's our center, right? Our center's going to be blocking this shade. The power play is going to be run to the right, and you're going to see him execute this technique in practice. So he's just blocking back, just like we talked about. Nose guard tries to go over the top. This is when he was just learning how to do it, right? He feels like that nose guard's going there. He goes to rip him. You can see he's got a held of his wrist. He's trying to hold his wrist a little bit there. Um, but this was just as I was teaching AJ how to do this. He gets into position. He feels like the guy's going to go. He rips. Okay? Take it to a game. This is where he tried to pull the kid's arm out of his socket. So now we're going to get AJ blocking, blocking back to free the pulling guard, and he's going to execute the rip block. Oop, let me go back there. He's going to execute the rip block on the kid in the blue, the nose guard in the blue. So he blocks back. And he immediately goes to it because he felt it. But you can see he's using his snap hand now to try to grab the kid's <laughs> – or his offhand there to try to grab the kid's wrist. But he's, the big thing is, is that he's ripping and pushing his hip, his backside hip through. It's a very center-specific technique. All right, but he's going to keep that guy between the ball carrier and him. And then you can see here he's trying to yank the kid's arm out of the socket because he, kind of he was kind of a jerk in the best way possible. Here's a choke to rip. He's going to be blocking back here. Same thing's going to happen. There we go. Blocks back to the three, so shuffle back. He's, for, he's fighting him. Guy tries to go over the top. He rips him, and he puts him back on his hip. That's probably the best picture of one. So that kind of puts it together with the shuffle back to a three and finishing with a rip. Um, very effective block, not a lot of wasted movement, and honestly, guys, not hard to coach. Um, it just takes a little bit of just takes a little bit of time to to get them to have some confidence in it. So this is probably like if you looked at it, that was probably game three in the first one. This is probably like game six. Um, so that's the progression over a couple of weeks. 
All right, now here was our, here was our, our freshman center, um, and we had moved A.J. over to guard, and here's our freshman center, uh, and he's kind of trying it for the first time. So he's feeling the pressure there, and you can see him there try to do it and try to rip. He's, he's, uh, he got better at it as the, years went, as the year went along, um, but I thought this was, this was like a nice clear picture. But you can see him here. He steps back with his knee, drives his knee, goes for a cross punch, he knows he's got to stay with the guy. He feels the he feels the, the defender starting to force him play side. And he goes he goes for the rip. And at the end of the day, he's between number nine and the ball carrier. So I'm happy with that. I'll just let it, I'll play it one more time and let it run. So good effective technique. I mean, that is that's one of those things where I bring this out all the time. My own offensive coordinator said it'll never work. I, I said it'll work. I'm the head coach. I'm going to do it anyway. Um, and it, it was really a great technique for us. I've taught it to a bunch of kids since then. And, you know, I think the ones that are, are using it really like it. All right, we start, we'll go past protection now. So <clears throat> things that are difficult for a center. Setting on a shade on your, on your snap hand. All right, so this would be if the center was involved in the, you know, where he's got to block the guy one-on-one. -on -one. He's not receiving help from the guard. Um, he's got to block this guy one-on-one. -on -one. What I've always tried to tell the centers is this. The worst thing that can happen, right, is they, they always make you stupid when they, when they cross face you, right? If he just runs up the field, we're going to be prepared for that. But we're also going to be prepared for the cross face. So what I tell guys is you want to cover the shade and take away the, the, the outside rush. So take away the rush to your snap hand here, but expect them to cross face. So I, I took this more for the picture than actually for the film. I would, want, I would want my center to drop this foot and slide it toward his guard and then just slide laterally over, all right, just so that he can cover this nose guard up, one, uh, you know, 100%. Like, I don't want him hanging on half the nose guard. I don't want the nose guard hanging on half of him. I want to cover him up all the way. Um, when we talk about centers and guards, we talk about setting nose to nose. So I want, the, I want my center to get nose to nose on him and then just realize where the escape angles are. If I set nose to nose and he tries to rush outside, I push him. I can push him out. That, that's easier than, than, than anything. If he tries to bull rush me, I'm prepared because I've got my bulk in front of him and I can be prepared to, to hop and stop the bull rush. But I know that the most dangerous thing this guy will do if I set toward him is cross my face. So I always want to have my backside hand ready for the, for the, for the face cross so I can get a hand on him and get back in front of him. So this, again, this isn't my guy. This is the New Orleans Saints, right? But I think what's, what's good about this is he's covering and then he's got to be prepared for the cross face and get back in front of him. And so I thought that that was kind of a – I'd want to get a little bit more depth if I was the center because I'm on the ball just to give myself a chance. Um, but in general, I like the footwork here because he's snapping, he's covering, and he's spreading his feet. Okay. Now, this is some pretty good film from Washington. It's the same thing. We want to cover the shade, take away that rush. But that guy's going to rush wide into this A-gap, or if he's going to run some sort of a stunt, or even if he's going to go straight up. If I cover him, I got a chance to block him there and to knock him wide, right? If he cross-faces me, I can get back in front of him because I expected him to cross-face and I'm prepared for it. So, again, this is a really good job. This kid just got drafted. All right, so he covers. There's the cover, right? He's back toward his guard. Get back on the guard's level. Spread his feet. Expect the cross face. They all do it. All right? Now, the one tip I would always give centers, too, is you got to get your offhand up because if you don't, he's going to take advantage of you. So, you know, he's throwing his offhand here just to give some space, which I think is good, and then he gets his snap hand back involved there. He's able to stop him. Is the end zone copy. And again, great feet. So snap, cover, spread your feet. So I want him to snap, cover, spread your feet. If you do that, you got a chance, right? Here's another one. Different center, right? They got 56 over guard. Snap, cover, and he gets the bull rush or the rush to the side. So he hops. Cover, bull rush, hop. Guy works back to the outside. You got him. So I think you got to kind of define, I talk about this with all my offensive linemen, you got to kind of know where the escape routes are. Um, 
And as long as you cover the guy, you've taken care of a gap. If he crosses face and you're ready for it, you've got a free hand. Um, very rarely do centers punch with two hands. I think guards can punch with two hands, but I think tackles and centers work their hands independently. So anytime the guy's on our snap hand, I tell him to get that hand. If he gets back and to throw that hand at him, uh, sometimes even tell him, I mean, this is, this is not exactly legal, but if you get your hands out of there fast, you can get away with it. Snap the ball, punch him in the face with the offside hand. Um, even better when he's on your offhand. Snap the ball, punch him right in the face, and then get your hand off him. Uh, they'll close their eyes and they stop their feet. That's just defensive linemen. All right, if you're covered by a zero tech, one thing the defenses are doing a really, really good job right now, I think, is finding ways to cover all five rushers. So, I mean, here's a picture of Michigan against Penn State, right? Tackles covered, guards covered, guards covered, tackles covered with an outside rusher here. And here's the nose guard covered by a zero technique. It doesn't have to be a nose guard. It's a zero tech. It's the linebacker walked up. What I always tell guys, if they're covered by a zero, there's two ways you can handle it. One, you can jump them. But, I mean, that might be based on your pass protection, right? If you can't just jump them, you got to back up and spread your feet. So I would almost tell the guy, like, well, you initially taught him in the very, very beginning of teaching him how to snap is to snap and get your feet back, one, two, one, two, three, and get back quick on the level with your guards. That's what I would tell the, the center to do against maybe a, a quicker guy. Um, against a big, heavy guy, sometimes snapping it and kind of jumping them and getting your feet spread and hitting them as hard as you can and then kind of popping back will stop a big slow nose guard and a zero tech. I'm talking a, a true zero, two gapper, right? But something like this, he should just pop back and settle. Uh, this guy just got drafted, I think, by the Ravens. Um, but you can see that's all we would want, right? It's him just to get back. I got clips of guys that aren't major college players doing this, but I, I like that set against the zero, right? Back up. And, you know, you're probably making some call. We all have a call for it, you know, money or – you know, a man call or something like that. We called it, we called it something to do with basketball one time because it was five on five. Um, but that's a pretty good set there, kind of the idea to spread your feet. And then you can get into the protection right or left based on what, where the call is. All right, now I talk a lot about centers setting middle. So if you, if you ever played for me or heard me talk about this before, I talk about center setting middle. And this is more kind of the idea of, um, I don't have to immediately block the shade. Um, I'm working more to an open gap. So, um, so the picture I drew up there is kind of the prime example, right? The, the call, the protection call is to the left. So that is the man side of the protection. The guard has started the turn and he has the nose guard. All right. So he has the A gap. The center has the opposite A. So what, what I tell the guys is if there's no immediate A gap threat, the center sets middle or he settles. And it's just like that set I just showed you, right? It's just backing up, all right? Going one, two back, taking the quick one, two, and then making sure that he's scanning to his side of the protection. But he's not leaving the middle, right? We want to keep integrity in the, in the protection. Centers have to keep the integrity. If the center just flew out of there and the nose guard jetted up the field and the guard was late, it's a sack. So I want to keep the center being able to kind of settle, maybe throw his left arm out there, and kind of don't look at the nose guard, but maybe put your hand on him and then look to the side of your protection to kind of scan what's going on through your A-gap. So he can scan and provide help versus an inside rush. So here's a picture, right? So this is a couple of years ago. Here's my freshman guard, sophomore center, really good defensive lineman. So it's the same thing. This is the man side of the protection. The guard has to set down on the, on the gap player. The center is responsible for this gap but I want him to stay in the middle. So this is an example of setting middle and staying connected. So right there, center is just backing up, puts his hands on number nine, but his responsibility is towards number 19, the linebacker. So he's just gonna stay there with that guard, no threat, they can double team the guy. So we can create help um, without having to slide out of there. So many times you see the center, he just busts out of there and gets way out there with no reason to do it, and it just leaves a lane for the quarterback. So we always want our guys to set middle when they have an open gap in their protection. Again, here's, here's some other clips, right? These are the pros. These are the pros. So um, center's going to settle, and he just stays in there. I love this one because of his eyes. I use this to teach the eyes. His eyes are all the way over there. He's looking for anything that happens coming in from that side, but he's going to help 77 as much as he can until he has to leave. So we always say you don't have to leave to take a look. Just hang in there. 
and it really provides good help in the middle of protection. So no one's in the quarterback's face. No one's at his feet. He can step into a throw. So important for the center to be able to set the, the integrity of the middle. All right, here it is again. It's not a defensive lineman. It's a walked-up linebacker. But the, tap, the center's got to turn this way, but he's got to help his guard as much as he can. He's not going to leave until he has to, until something shows up in his gap. All right, so if he feels that 98's in his gap, go hit it. And it's a great finish. All right, awesome stuff. I mean, this is, this is prime setting middle, just setting middle. Okay, here it is again. Okay, this is with, with my guys, right, Division three guys. You got a double barrel. All right, I call this a double barrel. Two three techniques and two A-gap linebackers coming up here to blitz. Now, the way that our protection was set, the, center, the center's still got a turn, all right? So he was a little bit more off the, off the middle of the protection here, but he pretty much sets middle, no threat to his gap. He can come back and help with the other guard still. So when they're completely uncovered, they can set middle, and then it allows them to help on both ways. Instead of going all the way to the right and all the way to the left and not being able to help, he can help that guard with that inside rush. That's not his responsibility. His responsibility was to the left. But he can help to the right based on setting middle. So I, I, I think those things are very specific to center play. And uh, it's how I've coached the guys to give them a chance at having some success. So, so uh, Aaron, if we want to uh, turn it back over to you for questions, um, how do we do that? Yeah, coach, we can we can write in the chat or I can I can talk to you. So let me, I've got, can, let me see if I can find it. Where's the chat here? See, I'm not seeing the chat on mine. Okay. Maybe maybe on top of your screen? Yeah, I'm looking there. It's got security, participants, mm. share, pause, annotate. Um, hold on, let me see here. Why don't why don't I uh, why don't you take it back over? Okay, I'll stop. I can stop sharing there. Oh wait, there we go. I can get to the chat here. Okay, great. So I typed typed in the first question. Ha! Ah, how does rain change the snap technique? Great question. Yeah. Um, this is what I told guys when it gets rainy or. You know, we don't, we don't deal with mud much anymore, you know, like everybody's playing on turf. But, you know, I played in the mud. So what, what I've told centers, I, I think centers and quarterbacks, this is, this is my tip on, on either snapping or throwing the football when it's muddy or wet. you got to jam that sucker into your palm. Most of the time when we're snapping, right, we have more of our hand on the ball than a quarterback would. But I really tell the guys, you got to get your whole hand on the ball. Now, if you really get, if you're really having a hard time with mud, I'm saying like slick mud, you gotta, you gotta be able to put your other hand on the ball and almost go old school two hand snap. Even like the Ferris State kid did. I think it's easier to do in the shotgun than it is under center. I was an under center quarterback and having to snap in the mud. That's tough. But what, what we'll do is we will do the wet ball drill once a week where I'll just bring a bucket out or get a, get a squirt bottle. And before the center's gonna snap, I'll just spray the ball with water. And, and have them get some snaps. I do it with my long snappers too. My long snappers and my short snappers, um, we do a wet ball drill. So we get a couple of old footballs and we just dunk them in water and have them snap back. And that's, it doesn't change the technique too much. It just, you just realize how much more of the ball you have to have contacting your whole palm. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, great um, answer. Yeah, holding calls with the choke and rip technique. We didn't get one. And I'm telling you, 53 used it all the time. Um, if we didn't get one on that first clip I showed you, I don't think we're ever going to get one. Um, you know, the amount of times, honestly, that the guys can get to holding the, holding the guy's wrist down mm -hmm. are so minimal. Um, the good ones can really get it, but to, to rip through, I've never gotten called for that. Mm -hmm. You know, you just, you're not really holding them. It's, you're kind of just getting position on them so you can kind of box them out and keep them away from the defense of the, the ball. So we don't get, we didn't get called once for it. And I've been using it for like uh, probably like five years now. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. So I, I really like the the technique against the cross face. So so I'm a defensive coach, and we always we always tell them to cross face over the center's nose. Yeah, so, and, and, so I mean, there's certain. There's only so many ways. Like I, I always say, there's only so many ways that 
that defenses are going to play, right? There's mm-hmm. probably only so many ways offenses are going to play. But the big um, – like I would always say like to, to centers, like if they can set back and set middle and they can get away from the defender a little bit, I think that, I think that defensive linemen in my – okay, one man's opinion, but, um, you know, just in 30 years almost of coaching and more of that playing, right, that defensive linemen come to the line of scrimmage and they've got one plan for the pass rush. So having played it, like I knew that if I, there was guys that if they were lined up on my snap hand, that they were going to try to quick swim me. They're going to try to pull that shoulder down and get by me that way. So knowing that if I can snap and get back, then they miss their first technique. And the second technique that every defensive lineman has is a bull rush because they don't have a plan. There's no backup to that first move. You're not going to get something complicated. So if you can eliminate the first move, you're probably going to get a bull rush next and we work on stopping the bull rush. So it's, it's kind of like I, I talk about, de, de, you know, kind of defining escape routes for guys. Like if I can get in front of him, he's going to go, if I get in front of him this way, he's going to go this way. Well, if I know that I can get back in front of him and I can stop that too. And, and that second move is done at, at half speed. So it, it, it was just an easier way for us to combat things as center. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that sounds, sounds very good coach. Um, coaches, do we have got other questions? So, I don't think so, but... I know I wasn't point, that good, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, from, from my point of view, you, you covered up every aspect of, uh, of a center play. And um, I think, in, I, think I, I, saw, I saw a coach present on, on, on the center 12 years ago in Germany, but... Uh, But that was the most detailed presentation I ever saw. On, on I appreciate that, it. It was fun. Position, so it, it was great for me. And I think uh, we've got, I think for, just for my team, we've got five coaches on. So you, you helped us to get better today. Yeah, I, I appreciate you asking me to talk about that one thing. Because when you said like, oh, the center position, I'm like, I don't think I've got one of those. Pr- I don't think I've got one of those built, built yet. Like, so it was great for me to kind of take a deep dive into it and say, Here's, here's the most specific thing that we got to do. Um, and, uh, and so it was good. And it was funny as I was asking guys, like, maybe I'll make this my thing. I don't know. I'll train centers. That's all I want to do. So mm-hmm. just, I'll just come over and be a center coach. <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's a position which is so important to the game, right? Hey, you can't, you can't start it unless you snap the damn ball. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, that, that was, that was what they always told me. They said, well, you, You know, my, my kids, when I was, when they were younger, um, they'd say, oh, dad, you played football. And, you know, their, their frame of reference is New England Patriots and Tom Brady, right? So, mm-hmm. like, oh, what position did you play? And I said, oh, as a center. And then, like, well, what does the center do? And I said, well, the center snaps all. Did you ever score a touchdown? I said, no. What's the center do? I snapped the ball. And my, my, uh, my middle daughter goes, well, that's not so bad, dad. At least you got to touch the ball every play. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love Coach, you, too. We've got another question. Um, yeah. Coach asks, uh, does your center have, a, have the ability to adjust the protection schemes or is that assigned to the quarterback? I've always put it on the quarterback. Um, I know that there's a lot of talk and a lot of people do different things where the center's assigning the initial point. All right. So he might be saying, we're going to set the protection um, to that linebacker, Right. And then you see this all the time in the pros, like the center sets the point. That's the mic, right? Mm -hmm. So 54 is the mic. But then you'll see the quarterback come up and the quarterback will repoint the mic. He might say, no, 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 no. We're going to make 98 the point. And that would just, that just directs the four, you know, that the lineman to that, the the guys to that side that the line's going to take care of. Like that's all that's going on. So to me, any adjustment on protection is always the quarterback's adjustment because He needs, he's going to see where things are flying from. And he wants, I want to make him responsible for protecting himself. You know, this all of a sudden, if the center makes the call and the quarterback's worried about snap count, motion, this guy's on the line, they got to do that. It's cover two. There's one, there's this, there's that. He's worried about a billion things. I don't want to have the center go, hey, let's go rip, rip, rip. And now it screws the center up. Or the center doesn't realize that he cut a guy loose and that guy hits the center. Let the center handle any kind of adjustments. Um, and I find it's, it's almost like the adjustments that you make are minimal. You know, I think what, if, if you've done a good job in the week as a coach 
of preparing them, you, you're probably making the right call in the protection that doesn't have to be flipped too much. So the quarterback can kind of – I've had the quarterbacks be able to switch the whole thing, um, but I never had the center do it. I, I always felt like the center's got a big enough problem with the nose guard and snapping the football. Mm -hmm. Okay, great coach. Um, I've got another question. Um, one coach asked, uh, when you when you do the one hand punch, um, is that is uh, how do you protect the the center against a rip technique or from from the nose? So, I'll I'll just to clarify it. So let's are we saying that the nose guard is on my snap hand and I'm snapping and punching him with my opposite hand? Yes. So he. He's talking about to, to, he that uh, that the nose can grab your arm, so your front arm pull you to his side and rip over your face like this and cross face yeah. it. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know, with with how we're setting, I think it's I think it's hard because when you're when we're punching. So I'm gonna try to get back a little further here, so I can kind of maybe explain this a little better. Mm -hmm. So if I'm the center and I've snapped and there's a nose guard here, okay, okay, so I've snapped the ball, I've removed it. My foot, my foot's going to go back. Mm -hmm. so, all right. So if I'm showing the center's feet here, right, if I'm going to get in front of that nose guard, right, I'm not going to snap and not move this and punch here. Like if I did that and didn't move my feet, I'm really vulnerable, right? Mm -hmm. But as I'm going to punch the guy, if I'm going to use a cross punch, which I call a cross punch, we would snap and then this foot's going to go back this way. So I'm trying to cover that defender, right? So as I'm going there, I might, I'm going to throw my hand out. So it's not like I'm going across my body. It's more like I'm just getting in, getting in front and throw my hand. Mm -hmm. And so if he tries to come back across here, I've defined, I, I've covered him. So I've defined his rush, his rush move. If he goes this way, I'm ready for it. I'm going to just drop this one back and slide to get back in front of him, and I can work him wide. So I can handle it the same way as any other rip technique. I can get back in front of him, take that, that my snap hand now and get it on his head. So the rip move doesn't scare me. Like mm -hmm. if I'm up on the ball and he's going to go right now and I sit here and I feel him moving, I'm immediately coming back because I'm, I'm prepared for the cross face. So the rip doesn't, it doesn't scare me as much. I mean, the amount of times that the guys are really going to be cross punching and doing all this other fancy crap is, is, is not that much. And I only taught the cross punch to like my best center. Mm -hmm. You know, now, now, okay, so the flip side is this. Now I'm covered on this shoulder. Here's my snap hand, mm -hmm. covered here. On this one, I would snap, and as I'm, setting, as I'm setting over to cover, I can throw that right in his face. Mm -hmm. So it's always better to your offhand, obviously, you know. Okay, got you, Coach. Great answer. So... I don't get another question, but I get a lot of knowledge today. So thank you very much, Coach, for, for your presentation and for all the work you, you did to put the presentation together. And I, I really liked I really liked it and learned a lot. So it's up to me to thank you. Yeah, any, any, you know, and, and I appreciate you asking me. It was, it was uh, like I said, it was my pleasure. And um, if you want to talk any other, any other things, any other offensive line play or anything like that, you, you've got, my, you got my, uh, my contact information. If anybody has any other questions, um, you know, feel free to look me up on Twitter and, um, you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we can talk anything you want. Yeah, that's great, Coach. I will come back to you. And uh, I guess we, we, we will have some other offensive line question and then yeah. happy, happy, to, happy to know you and happy – that you that you can answer. Nah, you made you made me you made me a lot better coach putting this thing together. I, I really enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah, coach. So thank you very much and I wish you a nice day. Stay safe during this time and we stay in contact. You got it. Goodbye, coach. Thanks, Jordan. Talk to you later. Bye.